Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to part two of the Goat Industries Fermo Electric project. I've um, scaled up the uh, original experiment uh, by a factor of 10 and if we have a look on the workbench now uh, I can show you what um, I've had made. Here we go. Let's see, what's this then? Right, uh, first of all my uh, friends at the machine shop have made this so they've cut out some slots in the bottom of that to create fairly sort of small fins but that should increase the surface area and uh, the effectiveness of the device in total. This is the hot plate so this gets bolted into the wood burning stove and this is the top surface on which the tegs rest. I'll just get a teg and show the position that that goes into, they go in there. So there's 10 of these all lined up and then what is then happening is this great big plate here, which is actually a sandwich in itself. This is a heat exchanger. It's got tappings in the other end, this end here, for water to be pumped through. So it's a sandwich and within this sandwich is lots of ducting for the uh, coolant to go in. So that goes on top of here and creates our teg sandwich. I won't actually put that on because um, I have to be fairly careful with these tegs not to dent them or anything. And um, this whole assembly when it's bolted together will go onto the trusted wood burning stove. Now this is the original plate that we used, as we can see, that's no longer in use. And I've just chalked in there a line, a diagonal line. The idea is to get this plate here to sit inside the wood burning stove at an angle so that the flames come up from the bottom of the stove and uh, have to go past this as an obstacle, in, almost inside the stove, but not quite. And then just a sh small gap there for the uh, fumes to escape past the oven, which uh, is in the top of the wood burner stove, then up there, up there, and straight up out the chimney. Bingo. Right, I'll go and get the plasma torch and uh, do a bit of quite serious modification to the wood burning stove. Okay, I've made the modification to the wood burning stove and I've just bent this bit of it up there and I've um, cut a plate to fit in there which I'm going to go and have a look at now. Over here is the plate. This is the plate here and I've um, bolted the hot side onto the plate and cut a hole in it. So the plate, the aluminium hot plate protrudes through the steelwork. So what I'm going to do now is get the tags and um, put them on top of here. Here's one tag. Uh, it's got hot sides written on the bottom of it. So those go in line along there. So there'll be ten of them all the way along this line. I figured. It's easier to bolt it all together on the bench and then uh, when I weld this um, steel plate in to the wood burner in a minute um, this whole assembly here will stop it from distorting. So that should work quite nicely. 
So here's our 10 tags in position, ready for this heat ex the, the cooling plate to go on top. So I'm just going to very carefully put that down on there without disturbing the tags. There we go. Seems about it right to me. And there's our inlet and outlet for the the coolant. So I bolt that all together uh, using a torque wrench uh, being careful to use the right setting which I think is three newton meters for all these little bolts here. There's one there, one there, one there. There's 18 of them in total. So here we have the whole assembly ready to weld in. Uh, as you can see I've wired it up. I've wired it up five cells in a row so there's five cells in parallel with each other and if you look closely in the gap under here I'll just get in there. I've put a little bit of fire rope in the gap there just to protect the wires and insulate the whole thing from unwanted heat transfer direct from the hot plate to the cold plate. There we go. It's ready to weld in now. Just got to make sure I get it up the right way round because it has got some fancy stainless steel cabinets to bolt on the outside of it. And here we are, the plates have been welded in place and the tag with its fancy stainless steel cover is now ready for testing which I'm going to do in part 3.